A Psalm of David, when he fled from the presence of his son Absalom. O Lord, why are they that affect me multiplied? Many rise up against me. Many say concerning my soul, there is no deliverance for him in his God. Pause. But thou, O Lord, art my helper, my glory, and the one that lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. Pause. I lay down and slept, I awakened, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who beset me round about. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God, for thou hast smitten all who were without cause my enemies. Thou hast broken the teeth of sinners. Deliverance is the Lord's, and thy blessing is upon thy people. Psalm 3 A Psalm of David when he fled from the presence of his son Absalom. This story, of course, is known to the more studious, but for the benefit of lazier people, I shall summarize it. After that double sin of his, the great David encountered many and varied misfortunes. Not only, in fact, were neighboring nations incited to hostility, but even his very family was affected by revolt, crime following crime. The intemperance of Amnon was followed by the blood guilt of Absalom, whose fratricide was followed by the revolt against his father and the rebellion of his subjects. You see, since divine grace was providing for him, none of this overwhelmed David. But with the incidents of that crime, of rebellion, evil took possession of the place and perpetrated deeds that are the stuff of tragedy, giving rise to a flood of disasters. At that time, accordingly, as he fled from his murderous son and those deployed against him, he wrote this psalm. That is to say, the divine spirit was at work even in those circumstances, thanks to the ardent repentance practiced by him. Lord, why have those who oppress me become so numerous? Many rise up against me. Many say to my soul, for him salvation does not lie with his God. Many, in fact, are the enemies of every kind who assail me from all sides. But more numerous are those who trouble me by their mockery and their claims that I am bereft of your providence. Yet I know that you would not persist in ignoring me, despite my many failings. On the contrary, you will rise up, the one who now humbles himself for the sin he has committed, and make him appear stronger than his foes. In fact, he intimated as much by saying, But you, Lord, are my defense, my glory, you lift up my head. That is to say, I have confidence neither in kingship nor in sovereignty. Instead, I trust in you to be my glory, and I expect to be quickly raised up by your right hand. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he gave ear to me from his holy mountain. My reason, of course, in offering my prayers to you, in all confidence, is my knowledge that you grant our requests without delay. Now, the verse is not to be understood as referring to a loud cry, but to earnestness of spirit. Thus the God of all who spoke to blessed Moses, who said not a word, Why do you cry out to me? Calling silence a cry on account of the earnestness of his mind. Now those words, he hearkened to me from his holy mountain, are set in accord with the view held once upon a time. It was thought the God of all lived in his dwelling, since he even delivered oracles to the priests from there. I lay down and slept. I awoke because the Lord will defend me. Frequently the divine scriptures call disasters night, because those who fall into extreme distress think they are living in a kind of darkness. On the other hand, sleep is associated with nights, so it suggests troubles, and release from them at the same time. You see the words, I awoke because the Lord will defend me, mean this. I benefited from divine intervention, and so proved superior to the evils that befell me. Hence, I shall not fear countless number of people assailing me all about. Arise, Lord, save me, my God. By your mere presence you succeed in scattering the countless thousands. Because you have smitten all those who hate me without cause, breaking the teeth of sinners. Accordingly, make me a sharer in your complete salvation, just as you made those pay the price of their injustice, who wrongly made me the bud of their enmity many times neighbors and foreigners, Israelites and Amalekites, and of course Saul in particular. So, now reward me with salvation, 
The phrase, breaking the teeth of sinners, that is to say, depriving them of all strength, is by comparison with wild beasts, which when bereft of their teeth are quite undaulting and open to attack. Salvation belongs to the Lord. I have no hope in human beings, he says. Rather, I expect salvation from you, and not myself alone, but also your people who are fighting with me. Yet I am distressed also for those who are fighting. After all, they bear the name of your people. So grant the blessing of peace, Lord, to both sides. He intimated as much, in fact, in the words, May your blessings be on your people. Blessed Moses, remember, associated peace with blessings. And, even if in history we find Blessed David very concerned for the people, and even for his parasite son, he was more anxious for peace than for victory against the people. Please consider subscribing to this channel, click the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, and leave a comment. This will result in the YouTube algorithm spreading the scripture to a larger audience. Thank you.